Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Maikut and uh, I'm going to be going over spacecraft thermal simulation process and file management in SimCenter 3D. Um, so the objectives here, uh, I want to introduce the user interface of SimCenter 3D, uh, also the simulation process. So I'm going to be showing a demo going from a part to a simulation, showing the whole workflow. I'm then going to uh, focus on mesh setup, uh, simulation setup, where we define all our boundary conditions and post-processing. Uh, for each of these topics, I'm gonna have an associated demo. So I'll start with the, the UI. So uh, some of the things I'm going to go over. So in the top right here, we have the command finder. Um, so this is where we can search for commands like extrude, cut, or um, even temperature loads, that kind of thing. And it's it's very useful for new users because uh, it can help you find where things are in the UI and, and find commands. Um, then I'll point out here the selection filter. This is for uh, maybe, maybe you have some overlapping entities like uh, like elements and faces. So you can uh, use the selection filter to limit your selections. Uh, and then we have the, the navigators. So those icons on the left you see, uh, we can switch between those um, to get to different navigators. So we have like a simulation navigator, post-processing, we have assembly, part, uh, roles. So that's those are the navigators. And then, um, one of the things I'm going to focus on here is is roles and and how to create custom toolbars uh, and associate that to a role and and what that allows you to do as a user is to kind of customize the the UI and and put icons where you want them. Okay, so uh, here's the first demo. So when you open up Sim Center, you're going to see um, Discovery Center. It's going to have some links to some uh, how, how to learn some new features, uh, maybe find some things you didn't know, also getting started. So um, yeah, this is a, kind of our, our landing page. And then on the left here, you're going to see the uh, history. Uh, so we can, that's where I'm going to start from for this demo because it's just the, the UI demo. So I'm going to open a, a prepared model. And so what I'm going to start with is the command finder. <clears throat> so it's in the top right here, and I'm going to type in uh, temperature. And so you'll see here uh, temperature shows up. If I hover over it, it's going to show me where in the UI I can find temperature. So now I know for next time uh, it's under constraint types. OK. So I'm just going to click temperature. It's going to open my dialog box. And um, in the top left there, I'm going to use my uh, entity filter, select elements, and click an element. OK, so I select my element, define a temperature. And um, here you can see I have OK and apply. <clears throat> so what apply does, it will keep the dialog box open so you don't have to reopen it. And OK will uh, close the box. So that's. Um, kind of the difference between OK and Apply. So now I can select another element, give it some temperature, and I, I've just applied a couple temperature constraints in the model. So you'll see in the top left there, it says uh, Simulation Navigator. And so what I'm going to do is switch to the uh, Roles Navigator. And uh, you'll see here under content, I have a, a, a couple roles here. So I'll just point out advanced and essentials. So essentials is intended for new users and uh, advanced is intended for advanced users. And, and what the role does is it controls uh, what tabs you see across the top of the screen and also how many icons show up. Um, so it kind of sets the UI a little bit for you. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom toolbar, <clears throat> and then I'm going to uh, save a new user role. 
and show you how to work with that. So here I'm going to uh, just right click some of these, add to left border bar. So now I'm, I'm putting icons to uh, a toolbar. Ideally, these would be icons that you, you use uh, frequently. I've added also a ribbon there too, so for assemblies. Now, if I right click the white space here, I can create a new user role. So I'm going to call this one uh, Gretzky. Hit OK. And you're going to see under the user folder, now I have an additional role called Gretzky. So now if I switch to Essentials, uh, you'll see the icons will change. And if I switch back to my Gretzky role, you're going to see uh, the icons I just put on the left border bar. Now, if I want to add something and change the role, I just can activate here um, analysis, right click the role, and um, save role. So, um, the other thing you should know if you want to set a default role, um, there is a user variable. For, for setting the default role so that every time you launch SimCenter 3D in the future, um, the role will open and then you can update it um, as you need. <clears throat> so this is the um, variable name, UGI default role. It's an environment variable and the role gets saved into an MTX file, um, which has a, a default location residing in app data under Siemens. OK, so um, that's, a, that's it for the UI demo. So I've shown you Command Finder, um, working with, with roles, creating a custom toolbar, and also um, defining your, your default role for when you launch SimCenter. So the next section I'm going to get into here is simulation process. Um, so unlike a lot of other CAE tools in SimSetter, we, we split up the model into several files. OK, so I'm going to go through these, these different files. So we have, uh, we have a part, which is CAD geometry. <clears throat> if you look on the right, you can see kind of a workflow. So the, the, the master part and idealized part, those are both PRT files. Um, and the idealized part is intended for defeaturing of the master part um, and it is not required uh, in the workflow, but is recommended if you need to do some defeaturing. The FEM is the uh, mesh, uh, which contains material and physical properties as well as thermal optical properties. Uh, then you can also have an AFEM. This is, this is also optional. Um, it's similar to a CAD assembly, but contains meshes. And then we have our uh, SIM file, which contains loads, boundary conditions, solutions, and post-processing. Uh, another terminology I'm going to bring up is uh, wavelinking or promoting. So uh, with wavelinking or promoting, you're creating a link to the master part. Um, so this means when you have updates to the master part, um, all of your, your downstream uh, like your defeatured idealized part, your FEM and your simulation will all get updated based on changes to your master part. So wave linking or promoting is, is a necessary step to create that link. Uh, and another thing I want to mention here uh, for assembly of meshes, you can use this also to create parallel workflows. So you could have, for example, uh, one person doing a PCB analysis, one person doing the kind of exterior panels and bodies of a satellite um, and have separate meshes and simulations and then bring those two together later on. And you can import both the meshes and the simulation entities. So for the simulation process demo, I'm going to show the workflow start to finish, starting from an assembly part. Uh, I'm going to wavelength a body and defeature it. 
I'm going to reuse a mesh in an assembly that has multiple instances. So in this picture, you can see these two uh, blocks. So that's my multiple instanced block. Um, I'm going to assign an existing mesh to a component in the assembly fem and import boundary conditions from another simulation. So, so the idea is I'm, I'm going through these internal blocks and defining those, and then maybe another colleague has created the external mesh and simulation, which I'm going to then import. Okay, so here's my assembly. I can see my exterior, I can see my interior blocks there. So model one times two. And first thing I'm going to do is create a assembly fam. So a new assembly fam, and this is going to be connected to my assembly. And uh, the solvers, it's, it's going to be in the space systems thermal environment. And now I'm going to unpack my model one and map a new mesh. So this is how I, I create a mesh for a component in my assembly fam. Now you'll notice create idealized part is checked. So I'm going to create the idealized part. And the first thing I'm going to do is open the idealized part and um, wavelength the geometry to the master part so then I can defeature it because I don't want to have these, these holes and chamfers meshed. So there's my wave linking button. I'll just uh, select my body and hit OK. Now I'll delete the holes. <clears throat> and also the chamfers. And now you'll see when I go back to my, my fam, we'll have this, uh, this new body. So to make things easier to work, what, I'm, what you can do in the fam is, is simply delete the original body so it doesn't uh, get in the way, you know? So now I just have my, um, my defeatured body and, and the other body there is actually inside of this, this, uh, this larger um, body. So here I'm creating a mesh. I've clicked the lightning bolt, which is a auto size mesh. And you have to create um, some mesh collector, which contains. So here is uh, thickness. And then I also have my material. So I'll choose some some material. And then you have optical properties at the bottom there. So once you create that, um, you'll get your, your 2D mesh, and then I have to mesh the, um, the smaller cube inside. So this is the smaller cube, and I'll just go through the same workflow using an entity filter for faces, auto size, and uh, yeah. So there's my, my second mesh. So both of my meshes are now created. <clears throat> and now I can uh, go back to my assembly fam. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to save everything and I'm going to map an existing fam to the other uh, model one component that exists.
So they're mapping to model one. And now if I zoom out, you can see that there are, um, there are two meshes here. <clears throat> so next step I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, import the exterior mesh. So you can see um, in the navigator there on the left, there's a, a red dash through this exterior part. So map existing, and I'm going to navigate to the, the mesh that exists already and import that. Now I have all my meshes. Uh, in model display preferences, we can change how the coloring is done. So I've just set it to color based on mesh collector. So every different mesh collector has a different color. And I'm going to clip section and just kind of go through the part and show you that um, all the meshes are there. So that basically covers it for the assembly fem. And then the next step we're going to do is we're going to create the simulation. That's where we have our boundary conditions. So I'm going to create a new space systems thermal simulation. <clears throat> and first thing, first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to import my um, simulation entities from the uh, analysis that already exists, right? So I right click the FEM. Uh, which will be associated to the sim objects I'm importing. And I um, just navigate to the simulation. And I'll import everything. So there's only a couple objects in here. So I have uh, radiation enclosure and um, orbital heating objects. And of course, the, uh, the solution there in blue. So and you can see it's it's assigned to the element, so I don't need to rebuild that part of the model. Um, and and the next step here would be to tie together, um, you know, model these internal blocks with some simulation objects, and then tie it together with the the external meshes. So that is um, the simulation process demo. So I know I went over quite a bit, uh, but basically we started from a assembly part. Um, I created a mesh for one of those components. I reused that mesh on, on um, another component that was the same. And I imported a mesh and simulation that already existed into the assembly. OK, so uh, moving on now to mesh setup. So with mesh setup, I'm going to cover mesh collectors where we have um, our properties and I'm also going to show you um, how to reassign meshes to different mesh collectors. It's quite easy to do. I'm also going to show you uh, material libraries and how to manage thermal optical properties in the model. So first I'm going to show you manage library materials. So I'm going to just open uh, a mesh and go to manage library materials. OK, so a couple things. Um, so you can see here where it says user mat ML library. This is the XML file, which is our material library. So I have I have one I'm already connecting to. OK, so let's say uh, you have a model and you spend time to set up all of your materials in that model and you want to export the materials and use them in, in another model, right? So within this dialog, you can just highlight the materials and right click export, and uh, that will generate an XML file that you can reference in another model. So that's material libraries. Uh, for thermal optical properties, you have managed thermal optical properties. And uh, similarly, you can export all of these properties to an XML and uh, import them into another model. All right, and then I'll move on to mesh collectors. So let's say I want to change uh, the properties and material of something. So I'm going to create a new 2D mesh collector, and then I'm going to drag a mesh into it to change its properties. So I'm just defining here some 
some material from the default uh, library materials, which, which come with NX um, or SimCenter or other. Define some thickness, and I have my um, optical, thermal optical properties there. <clears throat> Give it some name. And now I'm just going to drag my uh, exterior mesh into test collector two. And that operation alone will, will change, you know, the thickness, the material, the thermal optical properties. And then if you want to change it back, you just you just drag it back. And then just to uh, show you again the display options. So um, yeah, under more model display preferences. So the color basis um, default will use whatever uh, manually defined color you have there. And then if you want to not manually define colors, you can just select mesh collector. That's my preference. And then you can you, you don't have to spend any time setting up colors. It'll just automatically assign colors. But then moving on to a little bit of meshing, so I, I want to show uh, this here, so show and hide. Uh, the shortcut here is Control W, uh, but you can use this menu to quickly, you know, hide all your bodies. You can see here um, the options for polygon bodies, so you have meshed, unmeshed. Um, so this will tell you like which bodies are still unmeshed in your model and help you build models. And you can also toggle um, meshes to be turned on and off and um, yeah, it's a good way to quickly, uh, you know, globally change your display. So let's show and hide. So now I have my body shown. I'm going to show you uh, just the menu for mesh controls. So pretty basic, like size on edge, size on face. Um, you have a lot of options here, but I just want to show you that mesh control exists. And then if I want a 2D mesh, Th these faces, I click my automatic element size. Maybe I reduce it a little bit. Um, I select the collector I want to use for this mesh, and I hit OK, and there's my my new mesh. Yeah, so that's that's about all I wanted to show for mesh setup. So now I'm moving into simulation setup. Um, so a few things I'm going to cover here, organizing boundary conditions, cloning, contours of input data, uh, parameter tables, expressions, using prerequisite solutions, and also journal recording and custom icons. All right, so um, here's my model. So I have some simulation objects. I have a folder with some radiation boundary conditions. I have some some heat loads here. OK, and I'm going to start by cloning uh, orbital heating one. So I'm going to say, OK, I want to set up another scenario with a different orbit. So I've cloned the orbital heating object and I'm just going to rename it. Uh, then next, I'm going to clone the solution. OK, so this has copied everything the same as it is in orbit one. So I'm just going to rename it, and I'm going to remove the uh, the old orbit and, and put the new orbit in there. So remove uh, to active solution. And now here's my second scenario set up. Um, so here I'm going to set up the the new orbit and uh, just yeah create a new orbit and define some orientation options. So at that point I'm ready to run my uh, my second solution. So I'll quickly also just create uh, a folder for loads so you can see how that works. So um, you just click on the highest level there, create a new folder, and you can drag um, 
you can drag, I'm going to drag heat load one and two into that container. And that, you know, imagine you have 100 different loads, so you, you can use that to kind of stay organized in your analysis. Okay, so um, next I'm going to show only. So if you right click an object and show only, it's going to display, um, yeah, the, the object you, you have applied the heat load to in this case, right? So it's it, if you have a lot of meshes and components, it's, it's an easy way to see where things are applied. And then I'm just going to show you, so this is a heat load applied with a table. Um, so I'm going to edit this and show you, okay, so here I have Z and heat flux, and then I have a coordinate system defined um, to represent Z, right? And you can see those those um, red arrows, the symbols, they, they change according to the magnitude of heat flux applied. So if we want to take it a step further, we can right click and plot contours using this tabular input, and we can verify what we're applying in the model. Now, just to talk a bit about expressions. So even with a table, we can include that in an expression. So I'm going to make this a formula. And so now this FD heat flux, this is the table. And I can write this into an if statement. So I can say, um, if time is over a thousand seconds, use this, uh, this heat flux table. If not, um, don't apply any heat flux. So whenever you're writing expressions, I would I would suggest you you use units <clears throat> just to be safe. So here I'm defining uh, watts per millimeter squared for the units. That's it. So you'll see um, I have heat loads one and two. The next thing I want to show is, is how to use parameter tables. So I've done show only on this, and I can see my two little boxes. <clears throat> and I'll just show you the, the magnitudes there. So I have a four and a half watt. So anytime you define like a, some kind of value somewhere, an expression gets, gets automatically created for it. Um, so if I go open my expressions, I'll show you where those are. So here's my heat loads. You can see the source there is heat load one and two. So HL one and two are my expressions. So what you can do with, with parameter tables is you can set up different configurations. So you can say like, um, what I'm gonna do here is, is set up a nominal case for these heat loads, which is gonna be the, the current values. Um, but then you can have other line items for configurations where you can you can change those values. And so the um, well, we'll we'll see here like the uh, the workflow. So I've created a new configuration. Um, so this is going to be max power, and then I'll have a a min power case. So now you go into each of these configurations, change the power level. <clears throat> so yeah, five to seven, four and a half to six. And then min power is obviously going to be smaller. And then to, to activate it, um, yeah, you just right click activate. And now I'm going to go back to the uh, loads and just show you that the values have been updated. So if you want to change between configurations, you just open parameter tables, right click activate, and you can have a lot of expressions in there if you want um, and change them all at once.
Okay, so the next thing here I want to show is is prerequisite solutions. So um, in the case where when we run orbit two, we want to run orbit one first. Um, so we can set up a prerequisite solution. So I've just right clicked orbit two, click prerequisite manager. And um, now when I go to solve, you'll see a prerequisite solution chain at the bottom. And um, in this case, if I if I hit OK, it's going to solve orbit one first and then sequentially solve uh, orbit two after that. So this part of the uh, simulation setup, I showed you um, cloning solutions, cloning simulation objects, how to contour uh, boundary conditions, how to use if statements and convert tables into expressions. Um, I also showed you parameter tables and how you can manage, um, you know, changing multiple expressions at the same time within uh, SimCenter. Okay. So next one here is going to be journal recording. Um, so let's pause it for a second. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go into the part <clears throat> and we're going to change some some angles. We're going to record that all in a journal. And then we're going to create a custom but button which references that uh, that journal. OK, so right now I'm uh, setting up the, the journal. You can see it's C sharp. We have other languages you can select from. And so now I'm going to go to the part. I'm going to open up my expressions and I'm going to change some angles. And then go back to the assembly fem and uh, update. So you see the update icon there. And uh, now the configuration you can see is different. And stop the recording. Now, if we go into the um, the script, we'll be able to find, you know, where we made those changes. And um, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to create arguments in this script. So that way we can easily set up these buttons to change um, the configuration or the arrangement. So there's our arguments. <clears throat> now back to the model. <clears throat> so here, uh, customize. And then um, new item, new user command. And here is where we um, we reference our C sharp script. So we're going to call Stow and we're going to put in the arguments for the script. We can also give it an icon. Uh, we can change the name. So here we have stowed and deployed and yeah, if we click one of these buttons, we can see the simulation, AFM, and part all get uh, get updated together. So yeah, just to recap uh, what I've shown here. So recording a journal, um, changing angles in, in the journal, and adding arguments, and um, creating a custom button referencing this journal. All right, and finally getting to post-processing. So uh, here I'm going to go over contours and arrow plots, how to do overlays. So putting one um, result on top of another. Um, I'm going to show you snapshots, also cut views, uh, result subtraction, where we can subtract like results at one time from results at another time, or you can even go between uh, solutions and result probes. All right, so first, uh, one thing I want to show is thermal coupling visualization. So in pre-processing, you can um, you can look at uh, which elements are connected to each other in a thermal coupling, which is quite handy to have. Um, yeah, and then next, just jump right into plotting thermal contours. So 
Here I have a split view. I've set up um, temperature on the left, absorbed solar flux on the right. You can um, synchronize the views so they are oriented the same. And now I'm going to overlay conductive flux. Uh, so I like conductive flux because you can, it has a direction, so you can plot it as an arrow over top of your thermal contour, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So that's what I'm going to show. So we just change our um, display to arrows. So there it is. So something else handy to have is um, annotations. So there's this um, yellow A up here. We can select and we can create a couple annotations um, on this exterior body. So just grab a couple temperatures somewhere. We can move those around. And then we, then we can create something, like now that we're happy with this layout, we can create something called a snapshot. Uh, so a new snapshot, and then it shows up in this, um, the template navigator. We can rename it. Um, the other thing we can do is we can, we can copy this and we can change the source data, okay? So, um, and a snapshot is not just a picture, it, it is a, a layout in post-processing where we can refresh the result data, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna go back to a uh, single view here and show you uh, reduction of results, okay? So this is subtracting one result from another. So I'm gonna click reduction. And um, so here I have orbit one selected and time equals zero. You just, Click create expression and uh, expression name will automatically be given. And then you can select a different time. And do the same thing. An expression will be created. And then if you close this, you'll be able to um, type in a formula to subtract the two. You can imagine you can have other operations other than just subtracting. So I'm going to select create post view. So I get a contour and formula T1 minus T, temperature difference, and that's that's everything I, I need to do my um, subtraction. So, yeah, this is the delta temperature between about 700 seconds and zero seconds. Uh, you can do cut view here, so you can go through the part and kind of see what's happening. So in this case, these these small cubes might be skewing my results because, uh, yeah, they're they're much cooler. You can see, or I mean, it shows up the delta is uh, is smaller. Um, so I'm gonna go here and post processing navigator on the left and just hide those meshes. So this is how you can kind of control the display of of what is shown in post. So now you can have a a better visualization of temperature differences. All right, and next is thermal connections. So we open our time invariant results and we can see our thermal connections. So this is in in post for, for every thermal coupling, we will get uh, a result set for thermal connections. Uh, the number is is just sequential, so since I have only one thermal coupling, um, it shows up as a magnitude of one. All right, so next is um, result probes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the temperature along a path that goes through this uh, this dish, okay? So with result probes, first you need to create a result variable. So I'm going to create one that um, uses element temperature. Hit OK. 
and then click on Resolve Probe. So I have a query curve already set up, but I'm going to create another one. Notice here I have the time input of 1800 seconds. Um, so that result would, would be interpolated based on results. So a new query curve, and then I select my, my elements. You can see the preview line there. Um, so if you hold shift and select, you can unselect things. I, I screwed up there. So um, yeah, now I keep going. And there's my, my query curve. And I need to type in my um, magnitude here for formula. So my variable I created temp underscore three. And now I'm going to get temperature along the path. So when you create a result probe, it shows up under the solution. And uh, so I'm going to rename this to orbit two. And the nice thing about result probes is um, you can copy them to other solutions. And also they don't need to exist before you solve. So this is all being done after the solve. And now I can um, graph this. So there's my, my temperature along the path. I can graph my other one. And you can also overlay curves. Um, so I'm just going to jump over to Post Processing Navigator, find my curve, and right click Overlay. And if you want to export, you can just click the curve and right click Export. And the default option there is uh, default format is CSV. Okay, so that is that is it for the um, demo for post processing. So I showed you uh, thermal coupling connections, uh, plotting temperatures and solar flux and split view, also with overlays, how to do annotations, snapshots, how to subtract results from one another, um, how to use result probes, and how to um, overlay graphs and export data. So in summary, um, yeah, I showed uh, user interface. So looking at the command finder, uh, how to use roles and, and customize the UI. I also showed simulation process. So going from an assembly part to a simulation file uh, and also reusing uh, existing FEMS and simulations, and also how to work with an idealized part and uh, defeature geometry. Then I went to mesh setup to show uh, material library management, thermal optical property management, and how to uh, quickly switch uh, properties by clicking and dragging meshes to different mesh collectors. Uh, in the simulation setup, I showed simulation object cloning, solution cloning, uh, how to work with parameter tables to make changes to multiple expressions at once, um, how to use if statements, uh, how to um, plot contours of boundary conditions, and also journal recording and creating a custom icon. Uh, and in post-processing, we looked at uh, yeah, overlays, snapshots, result probes, and uh, subtracting results. So that is, uh, I, I hope, I hope that was useful for you. I tried to to point out some of the the things I find most important, and um, yeah, that's that's all. <laughs>